we should start um at the beginning i was you know we're here to talk about dinner in america um saw the film a while ago loved it haven't you know barely been a day where i you know i don't think back on it you know i've introduce it to friends they all love it and you know oh. I think that you know Patty is at least within that my circle of friends is the character that has really touched the heart of, of us all you know what was it about her that you know that spoke to you oh it's so funny I uh when I first got the role you know it was kind of pitched to me as like a Napoleon Dynamite style comedy so when I started reading the script I was sort of like how am I ever going to play this character this is so wild and but really diving into it and getting to know Adam and Kyle it became really clear that um these characters were really personal to us that like Patty is a, kind of a version of myself in a way it was kind of an opportunity for me to go back to a part in my life when I felt super awkward and didn't know who I was and what my value was and what I was supposed to be doing and everyone was telling me who I should be and I think it's a really relatable thing but Patty is so deeply herself and doesn't fit any mold. <laughs> and I felt, I felt that in my life um, often. And so to be able to go back to that and find value in a lot of the things that I had kind of written off as like naive or um, like just not conducive to society um, was really cathartic. And it's funny because Adam kind of does that with his actors now that I think about it, like Bunny Games, do you know his previous movie, The Bunny Games? That was an experience where the act, the you might know this, but the the lead actress had been abducted, and so for her that was a opportunity to relive and um, process that abduction in kind of a shocking way, I think, to a lot of people. But that's what I that's what I that's what I loved about the character initially reading the script, but then getting to know Adam and Kyle, it became really clear that. This wasn't just kind of a Napoleon Dynamite style comedy on the surface. It was it was really about these two characters who we haven't really seen, I think, a lot, this type of romance in movies, or we don't see it very often. And so it became really exciting, especially like I, I'm not someone who usually goes out for leading lady roles. I think um it was really refreshing to get a leading lady who was so not a leading lady. Um, but is kind of victorious in the end. Um, yeah. So yeah, Patty's very special. <laughs> Patty's very special to me. Yeah, I mean, so you know, when you watch the film, it's been discussed in a few interviews um, before. You know, that first 15, 20 minutes is it's almost like a hurdle you have to get over. You know, it's so aggressive. It's you know, it's so vicious. Um, but then obviously the film begins to shift and change, and it sort of allows the viewer in. You know, was that a similar experience that you got when you were reading the script? Yeah, definitely. At first I was like, I don't even think I can do this. I don't even know how to do this. This is so crazy. And it really is a, an intense um, first 15 minutes of a film. But it's funny because what the feedback we hear most, we did like, I think over 70 remote festivals this past year through COVID. And so we really have been able to connect with a lot of folks. And what we hear the most is that people say that was me on the bus. I was that person. That that was not an exaggeration of my life. That I, like that is exactly how it went down. And so I think it was really important to, as much as it's a broad, crazy world that we've painted, that it is really real. And those experiences still happen to people. Um, a lot of people resist that. It's really interesting. They don't wanna believe that like that actually happens to people and people actually act that way. Um, and I think also you really, you need to see how crazy the world is for these characters because it makes so much more sense why they would band together then and and the stakes of like what they have to overcome just makes so much more sense you have to endure yeah. it <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean you and Kyle got to you know you got to hang out ahead of shooting you know this is you know, it's not something that really gets to happen very often especially on an indie film you know what uh, what advantages do you think that that gave to the film that you guys were able to you know see each other you know before you were thrown into it uh, you know, Kyle and I got to kind of, you know, we were obvious, we weren't, we're not method actors, we weren't walking around Detroit as Patty and Simon, but we definitely were spending so much time together and having meals together. And we were able to sort of, A, find kind of like a common language and uh, really quickly, Kyle and Adam and I, there was just a really um, easy 
respect, I guess. And um, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, do you, do you know about the punk show in Detroit yeah. that he performed at? Yeah, we, we, we basically just got to kind of play as Patty and Simon in these real life situations. And so that by day one, we were all on the same page and we all um, trusted each other and there was a lot of love. And so Kyle and I were really able to push these characters in a lot of ways that I don't think if I, if I hadn't um, made those relationships with them, I don't think I would have been able to make Patty so unique and strange and weird and delve into all those things that were so personal to me and with my personal history, I don't think the movie would be the same. And I think it's sad, I think a lot of films like, you know, it takes a lot of money to make a film and time is money and more and more these days people are trying to make, you know, a 150 page script in 14 days and that really gets lost and I think uh, I say I hope that we're kind of moving into more of a direction where people see the value and really getting to know each other and having a common language and and now I just want to make everything with Adam and Kyle <laughs> I mean, you know, during that time as well, you know, you, you know, you wrote the anthem of the film, you know, the watermelon song, you know, what was that experience like? I think that was quite, that was, I think that was quite early on as well in the, in the, in the it, yeah. it was, yeah, they, Kyle and I flew, they never um, like put actors on the same flight next to each other, but they were like, Adam made sure that we flew next to each other. So we already got to know each other on the flight. And then Adam picked us up and took us to a diner that night. We all had patty melts. And then the next day we went into the studio with Kyle. So it was a really immediate um, kind of just like, we're all jumping in. We're going in on this thing together. And I got to sort of see the, the character that Kyle was creating evolve. And I think that was important for me as Patty to to feel the music and to know the music and um, to kind of have like build this idol because John Q is such an idol for her. We kind of really got to do that for each other um, in the first two weeks. And uh, so the second day or the third day, I would brought some stream of consciousness Patty poetry that Adam had asked me to write. And uh, we just sat down and kind of like in the movie over the course of like a couple hours that we, we wrote this song. And I never, I've, I've been a musical person my whole life, but I've never written a song before like fully to fruition. And so that was also really amazing and cathartic. I, I think um, this movie really kind of made me question like what I thought my own limitations were. And now I'm sort of like, everyone can do everything. Like don't not, don't give up on a single person. Everyone has value and everyone can do everything. And that is such an incredible thing to walk away from a, a movie with. <laughs> and I don't think we get that often, that kind of really um, like revelatory experience when making movies. And I mean, you know, the song is, you know, it's taking off. I mean, I've found at least two covers on, on YouTube with, uh, you know, with people doing their own versions of the Watermelon song. You know, you think if, uh, you know, if the traction builds, you know, you're going to be turning up at, you know, a gig in the future and someone's going to be <laughs> singing your song back at you. I would love that. I think that's the coolest thing. I, I would love that. It's so funny. My partner is a musician and I, he's teaching me the bass and that's the goal for me to be able to sing and play at the same time. And I don't know, I, I've always loved singing and I think I found my way through musical theater. Uh, I found like a way to kind of scratch that itch and I never really allowed myself to think about being a musician or like a singer singer. And um, now it's kind of making me think about things differently. And um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is a great song. I mean, you know, it's it just sort of lives, just sort of lives in the head. Um, is, Thanks. It's, got, it's yeah, it's uh, it's great. Um, I mean, for me, I think that the, you know we talked about um, Napoleon Dynamite earlier, but to me, the film is like uh, it's this sort of blend of Napoleon Dynamite, Heather's uh, mm. true romance, and weirdly, I thought Bad Santa, which was completely left field. But there's something about the dynamic between Patty and Simon, at least in the early stages, is a bit like um, Billy Bob Thornton's character when, um, and, and the kid. <laughs> Um, but, you know, uh, yeah. ahead of shooting, did did Adam sort of you know give you guys any pointers as to what character sort of character that he thought that Patty was? Adam is a very audio driven artist. He um, he went through a phase where every day he would write like a number of songs and record it, and so he has a bank of like 
400,000 songs, I think, that he's written. He's he's a master genius and I he's incredible and I can't wait to see what else he makes. But he um he he made us these like four hour mixtapes one for patty and one for simon and he sent us both those mixtapes that were really beautifully curated um so music was really i think the drive like even when he talks about making the movie he talks about or writing the script he talks about he it really started to click for him one winter night when he was like walking down the street and the snow was crushing and the the rhythm of the snow crushing beneath his boots was what kind of like brought Simon to life. Um, and the three of us are love music. And so that was kind of a really great easy in for us, I think. I mean, it's not just, you know, yourself and Kyle, but, you know, and, and, you know, giving your right game. I think the thing that struck me was like everybody, you know, no matter how, how featured um, they were or were, you know, everybody that's part of this, you know, seemed to be, you know, giving everything, giving their all. You know, what do you think it was about this project that made it so special that everybody just, you know, wanted to do all that they could for it? Oh, that's so wonderful. I really do think it is an ensemble piece at the end of the day and kind of almost like a love letter to Detroit because so many of those little roles are just folks off the street, you know, locals who wanted to be in a movie. So, um, I think that's Adam. I really do. He He's a really special writer and director and editor in that you think someone who does all of those three things is going to be incredibly controlling and um that's the opposite, complete opposite of who he is. He's really excited to kind of create a uh, structure and then see what you as an actor or you as a cinematographer or you know whatever are going to kind of bring it to life like how are you going to step in and then fill it um and I think that's really unique and I think it's a trickle-down effect you know you have some directors who don't care about don't care about the, their crew at all or to get to know them at all and I think that that's really to Adam, everybody is very integral. It was very, um, it was like at summer camp. It was literally like being at camp. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, obviously, you know, Patty, you know, she's got these scenes with Simon, but then she's also got these fantastic scenes with with her family. You know, you've got, you know, you've got, um, you know, you've got, you've got Pat, and you've got, Lee, you know, what what were they like to work with? Because you know, I mean, I mean, you know, better known for playing Chloe uh, in 24, but you know, she is, you know, she's, you know, a master comedian. So, you know, what, what, what oh, were they yeah. like? They're both master improv improvisers and like Kyle and I are not, I'm not super comfortable. I love imp improvising, but that's like not my forte. And um, so it was kind of scary, <laughs> but it was also amazing because that was their moment to shine. So Kyle and I kind of in those scenes were just so excited, like on the sidelines, like watching them. There are so many outtakes that I hope make it to it, some sort of DVD or Blu-ray Blu at some point, because they're just so funny. They're, they're masters of their craft. And um, it's really cool and an honor to be able to kind of witness, witness it sparkle. And then also like when they crack each other up, that's just so, that's so exciting. Because they are such masters that they never, you know, they they know how to not crack. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, was that something that, you know, you got, because I mean, Kyle is, he's really mean to you, you know, for, for a big portion <laughs> of this film. You know, Simon is, is really mean to Patty. You know, some of the things he says, you know, was that hard to, you know, sort of like to, to remain serious? Yeah, we we definitely, there was a lot of laughing on that set, but. I think Kyle and I kind of went really deep with these characters and um, it was like taken very seriously. <laughs> uh, we still feel a lot of ownership over the characters and feel um, very protective over them. So, uh, you know, it's funny. Um, as much as like Simon is super mean to Patty, I think everyone's mean to Patty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of, a, she's at rock bottom, you know, when we meet her at the beginning. <laughs> Nowhere to go but up. Yes, that's that, that's uh, that's true. I mean, I think the film has you know it's been out in the UK digitally since June. It's just got a, a snazzy, snazzy uh, Blu-ray release, which is currently sitting uh, quite a place on my shelf downstairs. Um, <laughs> but you know, it hasn't yet made it across across to yourselves in America. You know why? Uh, you know what do you think it is that you know I mean, that the British have 
embraced it first? Um, I think it's a combination of the pandemic. You know, we were at Sundance uh, in January of 2020 and um, I came home sick and then we went down on lockdown. So I think the pandemic really, um, I mean, it, it, uh, it, it forced everybody to pause for a little bit. And I think for us, this movie, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you saw it with an audience, but it is such a movie that you want to see in the theaters. You want to see with an audience, you know, it, as much as like people can be annoying in the theaters, it, it is really fun. It, at Sundance, like at our opening, there were multiple times where the whole audience erupted in applause and stood up and, you know, like the, people really like to be very vocal about their support for Patty. So by the end of the movie, people were like, yeah, Patty. And that is like a really satisfying thing. And I think, I think sometimes it, maybe it could be one of those movies where you watch it at home and you chuckle, you're kind of like, should I be laughing at this? <laughs> or like, you know, there, there's just a communal aspect to seeing this movie in a, in a theater that was really important to us and that we wanted people to be able to have. So part of that, you know, was by choice. Like we, we, we want this movie to come out in the theaters in the US and it just hasn't been quite been safe yet. Um, but, you know, I think there is something to be said. It's called Dinner in America and it doesn't necessarily depict America in the best light, at least that community where this movie takes place. So I do think it has something to say that people are a little bit wary about. They don't necessarily want to um, talk about in this movie. This movie kind of forces you to think about a lot of things. I and mean, I guess we've sort of touched on it earlier, but you know, you see that we, you you felt like you know Patty was sort of a younger version of, of yourself. But you know, through through playing her and the journey that she goes on, you know, you know what have you sort of taken taken from her or taken back from her? Mm, I think I kind of was able to. I mean, as a child, as a child, I really was really kind of like all over the place and um, in my own head and in my own world. But I was also so observant and I was so um, open. And um, I think as you grow old, th there's like a there's a guardedness that can kind of stop you from being who you think you should be. Um, there were a lot of parts of Patty that her openness, her, um, her, the way she just kind of like focuses in and she has blinders and she can't see anything else is like her, her joy, her uh, naivety. Like, I just, I think those were parts of me that I thought like, Oh, you can't, those aren't acceptable. Um, I don't know if I'm even really making a lot of sense right now but I think I think I was able to um like find parts of myself that I'd written off as like unacceptable to society and find them as valuable um and I also think like I think about everyone differently now you think you know somebody just by you know the social cues that they're giving off but you really don't you really don't know somebody until you know somebody and it's you you really can't um label or put anybody in a box until they've revealed themselves to you and, and everyone has value and everyone, everyone has something to give, even if they're not, they don't quite fit the mold of society. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, there's, there's so many, you know, despite obviously we discussed you know, the first 15 minutes being a little bit tricky for some people, but there are so many, so many fun moments in this film. So many, you know, there's, there's the scenes where, you know, they're, they're getting back at the jocks, you know, there's, yeah. you know, the, the, the interplay, you know, where she stands up to, you know, she stands up to her parents and stuff, you know, what, what scene, you know, what, what scene can you sort of look back on and go, yeah, that, yeah, that was like, I really enjoyed that day. Oh gosh. I really loved, um, I really loved all the dinner scenes. Um, I think the recording the song in the basement was obviously the most, um, vulnerable for me and also and I think also a highlight of the a highlight of my time there um we just had so much fun the whole time that it's kind of hard to pinpoint one part <laughs> but um yeah I, I would say make, recording that song in the basement was really special because Kyle had Kyle was there when we wrote it and Kyle had heard it. Um, but, you know, Adam had this crazy idea to, that I would sing it straight at him 
meaning I'd sing it right into the camera. And that was so crazy. As an actor, you were like, look into the camera. I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> I am not supposed to do that. And also that means like the whole audience is Kyle in that moment. And it's really vulnerable, really vulnerable thing. And we only did a couple takes of that. So I, I think that also really speaks to the trust of like Adam and Kyle that I really trusted Adam that that was gonna work and it, it did. And um, I just love them so much. I mean, you said, you know, you, you guys would, you know, love to uh, work together again. You know, have there been any discussions, you know, over the pandemic times, are you guys cooking anything up? Oh yeah. Yeah, we're always calling each other, bouncing off character ideas and sending crazy stories. And, you know, Adam like calls me and I know if I have a voicemail, most likely he's singing me a song. <laughs> you know, we're always, we're always chatting and steaming. We've got a couple things up our sleeves. Um, I just, uh, I think it's so cool when you find people that you, you love to work with and it just, it just works. So I'm holding on. Yeah. And I do think, I think that that, that dynamic does sort of, it does sort of come through on the screen. You know, there is something through watching it that you do, you sort of feel like you as the audience are being taken into, into this world mm -hmm. and into this family. So it is, it is a really special film. And I hope that, you know, it's sort of, it, it reaches the wider audience that it so richly deserves. Thank you. Thanks so much. It's so exciting. You know, we, we made it such a long time ago. So it's so exciting that people are still excited about it and that it's kind of gained this uh, like quiet cult following across the globe. <laughs> so can't wait yeah. to come out. Yeah, I think my Twitter account accidentally sort of became a Stan account for uh, Dinner in America for a oh couple of months. Oh my God. Oh, that's so kind. I'm not on Twitter anymore or else I totally would have been adding you. Thank you. Kyle's been uh, very supportive. So. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah like, it's been a, like, like, a semi, like a legitimate Stan account and not just like you know, some crazy person. That's really nice. Uh, Thanks. You, we had so much fun making it that it's like really heartening when other people like it. I still, that still really warms my heart. I, I'm just really happy. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it was literally, you know, like minute like 16 or 17. I just sort of like looked over to my husband who I was working with and I was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is like me in a film. This is the everything, you know, as I mentioned earlier, like Heathers and True Romance and stuff. And it's like, they are yeah. like, they're my films that I've adored. And to sort of see it in this new modern version, it's like, if, if I'd have been a teenager watching this film, I would have identified so much with Patty. Mm. I would have, you know, it would have been in love with Simon, strange as that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would have, it would have been, you know, one of those films that I watched until like, you know, I broke the I broke the, you know, the the VHS. So I think, you know, mm. it's you know got the potential to do that for, you know, a future audience that are, they're out there. And I think that's, you know, that's a really, you know, a really special thing. You guys should all be like, you know, really proud of yourselves for, you know, giving yeah. this to people. Thank you so much. That, that really means a lot to me. Thank you.